What's up? Today we're gonna do another how to to tie a rig, and this rig is gonna be good for finesse catfishing. It's uh, present your bait a little bit different than everyone else. So when you're going somewhere, it's late in the season, it's been getting hit hard. This is a good rig for catfish that's been fished for a good bit. <clears throat> so essentially, what it is, we're gonna tie a pompano rig or a double drop rig, but but we're gonna add some flotation to it. That's gonna present your bait a little higher in the water column, a little off, off the bottom, a couple different levels of the water column. Try to catch some good passerby fish. This rig works great for bumping if you're in a boat, but if you're a bank fisherman and you want a new way to present a bait that maybe not everyone else is doing it because bank spots get hit pretty hard, this is a good rig to give the bait a different presentation or maybe in a different level of the water column to help you put more fish on your stringer. All right, so we'll jump right into it. So I'm gonna tie two arbor knots. So that's how you tie a pompano, a pompano rig. And uh, I've shown that in my other videos, but I'm gonna show it again. So I've got, start off with about a six foot piece of, I'm using 20 pound test, you can go up to 30, 50, this knot gets hard to tie, for me anyway. Uh, a lot of the saltwater people, like if you're gonna use really heavy, heavy line, they'll, they'll crimp it. And they use crimps. So I'm gonna start out here, in about a foot tag or so, make a loop, about the size of a softball, just making a loop. And then, as if I was gonna start making a, tying a, uh, a uni knot, I'm just gonna loop my line through that loop about eight to 10 times. I didn't count, so here we are. I'm gonna say that's seven. Eight, nine, ten, and doing it that many times helps you catch the middle better. Because you want several loops of the string on both sides of your uh, on both sides of your drop. So you come in the middle of your loops. So you see what I've done? I've made a made a loop. I've made a big mess. I've just made this circle and I've looped it about ten times. We'll come in here to the middle of it. And you gotta be the exact middle, just roughly the middle. Separate it. We're gonna feed the other boat bell at the bell end of our loop. We're gonna feed it through. Alright, and what I do is I catch that with my lip, my teeth. Just like that. And bring it down. You kinda have to work it down. You'll get it all nice and pretty. And it's nice little, nice little arbor's knot right there. All right, so a lot of folks, if you're asking, why don't I just take a loop like this, tie a half inch into it and be done with it? Because if you do that and you start pulling against the string, you get hung and you pull, what'll happen is that half inch loop is gonna sink that cinch down to your hook and it's not gonna stay in place. This right here, I can get hung anywhere. I can pull against this from both directions, pull it up a knot. I can have a fish pull in here. I can have a fish pulling on this one, a fish pull on both of them. And what it's, and it's gonna maintain this loop. This loop's not going anywhere. That is not gonna slip. You just take it, make a loop like this. Just make, I'm not gonna tie it down because I don't wanna mess my stuff up. If I just went through and made a half hitch and cinched her down, I've got a loop. But that loop is not gonna survive. It's gonna get, it's gonna, and you start pulling against it from like the other fish and you put tension on your line, it's gonna collapse that loop onto the hook. It's just not gonna stand up. So I'm gonna say that this will be the bottom. I like to I like to get a foot off the bottom. And you can have your second drop just about as close as you want to your swivel. So we'll go up here. We're gonna do the same thing. We're making a second one. Except I'm not leaving nowhere near the tag end. I'm gonna leave. I like to put a, try to put a foot between the two hooks. So I'm gonna leave maybe a six inch tag in and that's gonna be for my swivel to tie my main line to. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we've done it again. Same, same concept process. We're gonna go in here. Find rough of the middle, like I said, I ain't got to be exact. I do 10, that way it gives you a little bit more leeway to find. Because if you if you don't do enough of loops, 
you don't find the exact middle and you only got like one one or two loops on the top or bottom you not it's not not it's going your knot is not going to turn out right no, it's not a double negative Your knot's not, it's not a double negative candle Didn't turn out right because it didn't get the middle very good, but it's gonna work for today's purposes. So I usually do it, the first one will turn out perfect and the second one's like, Oh, hey, that's a nice knot you got there. It'd be a shame if someone come along and jacked it up. We're gonna do some, we're gonna do some video magic right here. We're gonna come back at you with a perfect knot. And we're back with something you could actually fish with. Perfect. Got it perfect in one try. All right. So here's the magic of this rig for about $1.50 at Walmart. I guess for a turn of a bag, I should show you what the bag is, shouldn't I? Yeah. Bam, this is Walmart brand uh, crappie corks. Now, which one you get is very important to me. Those are the ones I like. I mean, I'm sure there's a mountain of corks out there you could get that would work. So you see these, they got this little, they're slip corks for crappie. There's a little tube in them. Watch this. Bam. That's the magic. I found that the color top does not matter. So now we've got, yeah, we got a freaking sweet little cork to put our bait on. So. So one thing I do want to say, you need to add a bead in a second. And that's gonna help from your hook going up into this little cork hole. And it is big enough to get your eyelid into I Found out through catching several fish at times will happen. So you thread it on. Say, so look, we got a dropper loop. Dropper loop, we thread our cork on. I don't think the color matters. And I find you, you want you to you want to do a uh, a bead. It's gonna be difficult to get kind of not too bad because it wasn't as difficult as I thought it was gonna be. Get that bead on there. And the bead is so the cork has a big enough hole in it that it will actually. You know, if you fish for a little while, it'll end up like that. See, so your hook can go into it. Depending on what kind of hook you got, the hooks I use can go into it. So I'm gonna use a bead. So two ways you can put your hook on here. So. You could feed it through. You see it? Yeah. Could just, oh my God, maybe. Here a minute. Feed it through. Feed it through. Loop it over. Call it a day. I don't like doing it though. I don't like to be complicated. Being a full hook. You know, this is essentially kind of like a drop shot. And being a swivel, or a circle hook, excuse me, this is actually a, this is a team catfish octopus hook. I like, I like these octopus. They're a circle hook and offset. And there's a lighter wire, I don't like the double action, too thick of a wire. Go in from the front. 
I just dig it. Uh, I like to say uh, Palomar. It's a simple, and it's just like if I was tying a drop shot for a bass rig. Do the exact same thing. Come through. That's part of your setup too. You want your droppers to be long enough that you can do that pile more. But if they're not, you can always just loop the line over. And bam, there we are. So I got, what this does is it's gonna float. It's gonna float your bait. This is not, you can rig this up for larger size baits if you wanted to. It'll, this thing will probably float a pretty decent chunk. It's not gonna float a giant bait. Now, if you add, if you add a float like a, uh, like a Santee or a hair free float, it'll float on top, right there where you're uh, on top of the main line, on top of your line with the, where it connects to the swivel. If you add a float there, you can float heavier. It'll add to all that buoyancy together. We'll get bigger baits off the, off the bottom and present them the way you want them presented. But I'm doing this more like, more for an eater rig. You know, this is more for like a, you know, that five to 10 pound class catfish. Doo -doo. Bear with me. I'm gonna tie this other hook on here real quick because I'm actually gonna fish for this rig. It's nice, these are ones you kind of want to tie up before and this isn't, you can tie up without putting all the, I'm just gonna loop rig this one. We'll, We'll do some research and development because I don't ever loop, just leave them. I'm gonna leave it to see. This is mono, so you can get, I'm using mono, and this is just using good old trialing 20 pound big game. 30, I think I would like 30 better. But uh, that mono is a little bit forgiving with the knots. Much more forgiving. So this is gonna be the top because it's got the shortest legal line to me. I'm, whichever end I end up with the shorter legal line. I like to put it on top. You might want to put it on the bottom if you want your bait to hang closer to the bottom because essentially that's how far your bait will be off the bottom if you use that. That's about eight, seven, eight inches. I like to get it off the bottom a little bit. So this one's about 18 inches. And this is going to be my bottom. But I mean, you can do it either way you want to. If you want your baits a little bit lower in the column, I do this to get my baits a little higher in the water column, different presentation. And I'll tell you, I do this with every rig I tie that for the weights. I always put just a simple snap swivel on to tie my weight to. But the only reason I do this, well, for a couple reasons. One, you can uh, swap out your weight size dictating on, you know, your water depth, current. You don't need a three to four ounce weight. Don't, I mean, maybe you do, fling it farther. If you want a one ounce weight, you can use that. Whatever you, whatever you need. You're gonna want at least run two ounce weight to get all this at the bottom though, to, to get this because it's flotation and stuff like that, I would say. Me, I run at least two ounces on this rig. And that's just so it sinks everything good. Everything's down there nice and orderly. But also, when I'm traveling with my rods, I take the weights off so I don't beat up my rods. Because those big heavy weights that we use will sit there and beat on your rod, the, the fiberglass or the uh, composite part of your rod, and create weak spots, weak points in your rod, beating on the back of your truck, or in the boat, and when you hook into that big fish, your rod could fail there. It's, it's happened. More to bass rods and catfish rods. I mean, I've seen my catfish rods have taken some punishments. I got one that got slammed in my my uh, pontoon deck, and still still hanging in there. B and M, shout out. Give me a sponsorship, B and M. I just put one of these bigger swivels on. Oh, here we go. I was looking for a smaller swivel. Uh, this is a small rig. I'm running a smaller swivel. I don't know what size this is exactly. Just something you would use for bass fishing or small catfish. If I'm running for a bigger fish, I like these team catfish big ones. I don't know what size. I, don't, I can't remember. I call them the big ones and little ones. The, team, the ones that the team catfish ones have been pretty good. I've used them all year. Just first year I've really seen them out. I like them a lot. And all these connections for the rigging, I just use a uni knot. I use a uni knot for just about everything. Double uni for whatnot. There you have it. This is what I have politely coined the catfish pompano rig. You can see. Because it's really, I got the idea because this is literally just an upscaled pompano rig for surf fishing. If you're fishing from the surf. So, you know, it's going to hold your shad or whatever your bait is. 
that there's the bottom and here's my first bait and it's going to float it up off the bottom it also helps around the snags kind of keep your bait up away from the snags the only thing that sucks around the snags is when you lose it all you're like dang it took me 10 minutes to tie that 15 if you're watching this video but anyway i've been wanting to put this out of I've had a couple of my fishing videos where y'all seen me using this and it's caught fish. It's when the fish get picky, fantastic rig. It shows, it's just a kind of a finessey presentation. And uh, I think y'all will help put more fish in the boat or on the bank, especially if you're bank fishing and you want to throw a lot of those, your bank fishing spots are kind of like uh, community spots and people know about it and you're not the only one you're likely not the only one fishing there you might be but even if you are showing something a little bit different as you're showing it something different from everybody else it's also fishing that spot and that's going to help you bag more fish hope you have a good one hope you get some fish take it easy